Buildings are surprisingly big in their impacts. All buildings generally contribute to climate change. It turns out that buildings are responsible for about 40% of the carbon emissions. Living Building Challenge shines a light on what needs to change. I uh, grew up in northern Canada in a mining city called Sudbury, uh, and Sudbury was famous for its environmental pollution. Um, we had, at the time, the world's tallest smokestack. It was taller than the Eiffel Tower and looked like a big cigarette stuck in the ground. <laughs> and uh, when I was very little, I used to think it was a cloud-making machine until my mother corrected me that it was a pollution and cancer-causing machine. And that also inspired me to be an environmentalist at a young age. I became frustrated with, I would call, the rate of change in the building industry. Um, I think, you know, somewhere in, you know, uh, 2004, 2005, I, I really decided that I needed to create a new framework for the building industry and began working on it. So when uh, somebody came to our foundation and asked for a grant um, to pursue the Living Building Challenge as a, a way of influencing architecture, we not only made them a grant, but we started to investigate whether we could build a building ourselves. The Bullet Foundation is, is at its core an environmental philanthropy, and I, I genuinely believe that uh, people who work in a field need to walk their talk. The Living Building Challenge is saying, how do we build with materials that are more responsible? How do we not contribute to climate change? It's a very different way of looking at the role that buildings play in the environment. We started looking at the office space that's available in Seattle. Uh, the building that we were in was wildly inefficient, and uh, I just felt we needed to move to someplace that was greener. We decided we would go and build our own building and explore kind of the frontiers of what could be done. We set out to build a really super high performance building, and when we did that, we had one main goal in mind, and that was to meet the living building challenge, to be net zero energy, net zero water, to make a building that does no harm to people or the planet. So net zero energy is an interesting concept. What it means is that on an annual basis, the building uses as much electricity as it generates. So we are looking at renewable sources of energy and that led us to wind and solar. Uh, wind is not an ideal solution in an urban setting where you have a lot of buildings and a lot of turbulence. Solar was really gonna be the ideal solution. And, and of course, this is Seattle, so uh, we weren't sure how it was going to work. It was understandable that there was skepticism. When we look at the average commercial office building in Seattle, they have an energy use index of something like 72 kilobtus per square foot per year. The target for this building at the end of simulation was 16. A lot of folks justifiably said, you know, you can't do that. So the main approach to that is actually by not using lots of energy in the first place. Most of the building is designed around working with the climate, using the sun, using the wind, using the light to create a comfortable environment. And the building is activated by the weather. So when a cloud goes over, uh, the shades go up. When the sun comes out, they go down. And in, the building enclosure is almost alive. The biggest challenge with hitting the net zero energy target was that we couldn't control what the tenants do. If people within the office choose to bring in high energy consumption equipment, such as space heaters, it, it really jeopardizes meeting their energy budget. So there's a strong um, incentive to use energy in a smart way. In the end, we produced 54% uh, more energy than we used last year. The building and its tenants uh, proved the skeptics wrong. With water in the Living Building Challenge, we talk about uh, being net positive. The building uses rainwater for all purposes. Our systems are in place to capture rainwater on the roof when the rain falls. It goes down into a cistern in the basement of the building, and then water is pulled through a series of filters uh, to remove any impurities, and we're left with clean, potable water. The, the building actually captures a lot more rainwater than it needs. Um, and so, you know, it's an opportunity to actually supply other, other buildings with rainwater. So it's almost a little municipal water treatment plant right in the middle of the city. 
there's something called sick building syndrome. And a lot of office buildings, especially in downtown locations, the, the windows don't open. The indoor air quality can actually be really terrible and, and bad for human health. And it's because so many of the materials inside the building are putting off toxic fumes. Productivity has gone up for the people that move into the building. And for sure, health has. There's less sick leave here. And finally, a surprise to everyone, people who have seasonal affective disorder in Seattle, people who get depressed by the near constant cloud cover, uh, see that tend to go away when they're in the bullet center. They're exposed to so much natural light that they just don't get that depression. Well, at the time that the Bullet Center was being done, it was the biggest living building we had. We were pushing the boundaries with the solar array, we were pushing boundaries with the water system, and um, so there were a lot of hurdles um, that uh, we had to get through, and those were things we were, we were concerned about. Five years ago, if you had said, we're gonna have an office building in Seattle powered entirely by the sun, people might have thought, yeah, what are you talking about? It can't be done, it's Seattle, it's cloudy. But we've done it, and now we've shown people that it's possible. And I suspect within five or 10 years, we're gonna see a lot of buildings that are uh, better than the Bullet Center in terms of their use of energy and their beauty and their ability to uh, provide healthy environments without leaving an environmental impact. We've toured maybe 8,000 people through this building since it's opened. And that includes lots and lots of people who have been inspired by the building and wanna follow this path. I hope to change a lot of things with the creation of the Living Building Challenge. I, I wanted to, to shake the building industry up, to challenge them, that's why the word challenge is in the title, to think very differently. Um, I want to see new products that are healthier out in, in the industry. I want to see better buildings that are more energy efficient, water efficient. Um, and we've had a lot of success, which is very exciting.